I am Anthony Medway, the sales manager at Pale and Test. So our first section, why should we test pool and spa water? So this is what I'm dreaming of right now on a sun lounger beside a crystal clear pool instead of in my home office here in cloudy England. Testing pool and spa water helps you to maintain optimum conditions. High water quality helps you to ensure your bathers are both safe and comfortable. For example, high combined chlorines can cause itchy red eyes and strong smell that causes irritation and sneezing. If your pool or spa water is corrosive or scaling, you can expect degradation and damage to the surrounding fixtures and fittings, which will need to be replaced more frequently. Keeping control of your pool water quality will mean you can make smarter decisions on when to use your chemicals and you can get the dosage used correct. In the long run, this will have economic benefits. One thing that you might be seeing as you bring your pool back from slumber this spring summer is a green pool. Careful control of your pool and spa water can remove any contamination in the water to keep your water sparkling. We're now going to explore the key parameters you may want to consider when reopening your pool, as well as fitting them into your routine pool maintenance. These are applicable to both domestic and commercial pools and spas. We're going to mention some guidelines on recommended levels. These are based on UK guidelines. However, we always advise that you check with your local authority on recommended levels. There are two types of disinfection. Primary disinfection will kill bacteria and viruses and provide a residual to prevent cross-contamination. Chlorine is one of the most common forms of disinfection. When testing for chlorine, you must monitor both free and total chlorine. As chlorine reacts with molecules containing nitrogen, they form combined chlorine. Nitrogen molecules are introduced to the water by us, the bathers, through sweat, urea, and all the products we use on our skin and hair. They can also be introduced from the environment, especially in outdoor pools. Combined chlorine still have disinfection properties, however, they are not as efficient as free chlorine. We suggest for a well-designed pool, your free chlorine should be around one milligram per litre. This can be lower if you use secondary disinfection. For your total chlorine, this should be as low as possible, but never more than one milligram per litre. Bromine is the most popular disinfectant used in hot tubs and spas. Bromine is favoured by hydrotherapy pools and spas as it is more active at higher pH levels and more effective at higher temperatures. Bromine also has the additional benefits that it does not cause irritation to the skin or eyes that you may get from chlorine disinfection. We recommend that bromine levels are maintained between 4 to 6 mg per litre. There are other primary disinfectants used on the market, for example chlorine dioxide and PHMB, that we haven't discussed today. Secondary disinfection increases the kill of infectious organisms, especially cryptosporidium, and helps to break down organics. Organics tend to consume primary disinfectants, thus making it harder to maintain a stable residual. Ozone purifies water 3,000 times faster than chlorine. It is very effective at killing both cryptosporidium and gargia, which are not affected by chlorine. Ozone has the additional benefit that it does not affect the pH levels of the pool and provides that crystal clear sensation of the water. There is, however, a large initial cost in setting up ozone. Cost benefits can be seen in the long term with reduced free chlorine levels to 0.5 mg per litre in the pool and 2 to 3 mg per litre in a spa. Hydrogen peroxide breaks down too quickly in the water and hence needs to be dosed alongside a primary disinfectant. It can enhance the disinfectant power of other oxidizers in the water. Recommended levels depend on the size of your pool, but typically a level between 30 to 100 mg per litre is required. Ultraviolet or UV is also a form of secondary disinfection. However, this cannot be measured using general water testing technologies. When choosing your disinfection, you'll want to take the following into consideration. Will there be any interference with the source water? Take into consideration the shape, the size, as well as the temperature of your water. The number of swimmers, the more the bathers equals more contamination. Do you have space? Can you install the necessary equipment? Can you securely store the chemicals and have your staff been trained to use these chemicals? And finally, what is your budget, both short term and long term? These are all things you should consider when picking your disinfection. Water balance is a bit like at the MOT for your car. It is a general health check of your water. It can alert you to changes in the water chemistry that will lead to corrosional scaling in your pool, which can have long term impacts on the longevity of your fixtures and fittings, as well as giving a poor bather experience. The water balance calculation involves several different parameters and you must test them all and use the results to calculate your pool or spa water balance. This may take you back to your childhood chemistry class. pH is the measure of how acidic or alkaline the water is and uses a scale from 0 acidic to 14 alkaline. 7 is seen as neutral and what clean fresh water would be. Ideally, you want your pool water to be between 7.2 and 7.4 on the pH scale. This not only provides an enjoyable experience for the bather, but more importantly, this is the level that disinfection is at its most effective. Anything you put in your pool, bathers or chemicals, will affect the pH. 
we want the pH to remain stable around 7.2 to 7.4. So we need to have the pH protection mechanism. This is the alkalinity. Alkalinity levels protects and provides a buffer from dramatic changes in pH. We advise that to ensure this buffer is in place, your alkalinity levels need to be within the range of 80 to 200 milligrams per liter. Below 80 milligrams per liter will mean pH levels become too unstable, while above 200 milligrams per liter, they are too difficult to change. Cyanuric acid, also referred to as stabilizer, is normally associated with outdoor pools. Chlorine molecules will quickly degrade by UV light and maintaining a residual becomes difficult. So cyanuric acid provides a shield around the chlorine molecules, enabling them to continue with their disinfection activities. Simply, this means that you're not having to continuously dose chlorine and hence the cost benefit. We recommend levels should be below 200 milligrams per liter, but ideally between 25 and 50 milligrams per liter. You may have heard your water in certain regions is either hard or soft, or perhaps you have found in your kettle or iron these white deposits. Well, this is all due to calcium hardness. In areas of low calcium levels, the water will start to erode the pool surrounds and grout. If there is too much, the water will scale, leaving the white deposits. We recommend that you maintain your calcium hardness levels between 80 to 200 milligrams per liter. A high level of TDS is a warning sign of pool water quality decreasing. Source water will likely have several hundred milligrams of liter of TDS, but this can be increased by pool chemicals and pollution. Your TDS should never be above 100 milligrams a liter above your source water and no more than 3,000 milligrams per liter. Finally, temperature. This will vary on your pool or spa, whether it's an indoor pool, outdoor pool, or hydrotherapy pool. Temperature is important for bather comfort, but also in selecting your disinfection. It must be noted that the warmer the pool, the quicker the microorganisms will multiply. When selecting your pool temperature, take into consideration the use of the pool. Is it for fitness and training? You may want it slightly cooler at 26 to 28 degrees Celsius. Or if it's for medical purposes, like in a hydrotherapy or spa pool, this may reach up to 40 degrees Celsius. There are additional costs you should take into consideration when heating, as well as monitoring your air temperatures to reduce humidity. As mentioned, water balance is a scale to measure how likely your water is to scale or corrode its surroundings. Measuring the water balance is important when considering the lifetime of your fixtures and fittings. There are two common scales for water balance, Langelia Saturation Index or the Rise Note Stability Index. In this instance, we will discuss the Langelia Saturation Index. To calculate the water balance using the LSI, you will need the following readings, pH, temperature, calcium hardness, total alkalinity, and cyanuric acid if it is present. The LSI uses a factor table, which once you have taken your measurement, you match it to the corresponding factor as demonstrated here. Once you have your readings and the factors, you can do the sum to find out your LSI, and then use a water balance scale to find out whether your water is balanced. If it's corrosive or scaling, then you can take the necessary steps to bring it back into balance. There are some other key parameters you may want to test for when reopening your pool or as part of your regular testing regime. If you have an outdoor pool, you may be returning to it with a green color. This could be due to phosphates. Phosphates are naturally occurring in water and promote algae growth. Phosphates are also introduced through soil, twigs, and leaves, but also through bathers. Phosphates are used in many beauty products today. To keep algae growth at bay, we suggest phosphate levels at 0.0 milligrams per liter or below. Turbidity is the measurement of how cloudy the water is. Measuring turbidity can indicate problems including pool water chemistry, deteriorating filter quality, inadequate backwashing, incorrect flow rate, or pipe sizing. Turbidity levels are recommended to be below 0.5 NTU. Turbidity levels should be kept at low levels as this ensures good balanced water and improved bather comfort, but also safety. This enables lifeguards to be able to see if any swimmers are in trouble. These tests are to check there are no dangerous pathogens in the water which can cause serious illness to the bather. It is advised that the following are monitored, total coliforms, E. coli, and pseudomonas. When monitoring microbiological organisms, the aim is to have the lowest or no value possible. These are just some of the main parameters you may want to test for. However, there are many other parameters which may interfere with your pool water quality. If you are having issues with the pool water, then please contact us for more information. The parameters previously discussed are all important when considering reopening your pool or spa, as well as fitting into a routine testing schedule. These are some key points to pool maintenance during lockdown. Make sure you maintain your pool within the parameters advised by your local authorities. Keep the pH level between 7.2 and 7.4. As you may recall, this is the optimal range for disinfection to work effectively. 
The WHO states that a residual concentration of free chlorine of above 0.5 mg per litre is sufficient to kill enveloped viruses like coronavirus. Maintaining your pool at the ideal range of 0.5 to 1 mg per litre is advised. For additional protection, the use of UV systems or other secondary disinfection is recommended. As when reopening a pool after a prolonged period, you may want to consider shock treatment of your pool or spa water. Make sure you routinely check that you're within the recommended perimeters. If not, adjust the water to be within the balance. Ensure you continue to clean your pool, especially in outdoor pools. Remove any debris or dirt as these can be a stronghold for pathogens. Pool salons should be disinfected with products designed for this purpose. If you have your own domestic pool or spa, it is still safe to use. However, you should consider pre and post showering, as well as routinely washing swimming wear and towels at a high temperature. If you're uncertain on your guidelines, then please contact your local governing body for more guidance. When reopening your pool, it is advised that you do a full suite of tests. This will give you the indication of your water quality and the next necessary step to stabilizing your water and having a good water balance. It is important that you maintain your water balance and enter a routine of testing. This is what we at Payline Test would recommend is a good routine to follow. However, as per the parameter recommended levels, please confirm with your local authorities on required frequency of testing. You'll want to test your disinfection and pH daily. It is advised that as a minimum, you will test on open and close of your pool. Depending on your bather load and frequency of swimming, you may want to increase your testing frequency to every hour or two. If it is a domestic pool, then you may only do this once a day. It is advised that you do a water balance once a week to ensure the water is balanced and that your water is not corroding or scaling. Hence, testing alkalinity, calcium hardness, cyanuric acid, and TDS will enable you to do your full water balance. Finally, on a month-to-month -month basis, you may want to test for phosphates, turbidity, and do your microbiological testing. So we have discussed the parameters and how often you should test these, but now you must be wondering how best to test. What instruments or method is suitable for you? There are so many options on the market, but what is ideal for you? We have the low entry level testing products. These include test strips, mini kits, and pool testers. These all use visual methods of testing and is ideal for domestic users. They are easy to use and economical. Still in the visual group, but slightly more accurate is the comparator. These have a wider scale of color matching. However, it's still a visual method and has its drawbacks like many other visual methods that rely on human interpretation. For a more professional user in the commercial sector, you may want to consider a digital product. TDS is measured using an electrochemical pocket sensor, and these can also test for temperature. The human eye can detect anything above 5 NTU. Anything below all looks the same. To be able to measure 0.5 NTU, a digital method is required. Hence, a turbidity meter is the ideal solution for measuring at that lower range. The photometer is the most popular in testing technologies, as it can do a full range of test parameters and removes that human element of interpreting colors. Providing an accurate and precise result, these nowadays come equipped with additional features, including data to connectivity to enhance your data collection. When selecting the ideal test method, the general decision is between how easy it is to use and how reliable the results are. Here we have a matrix which has an axis that runs from easy to do up to hard to do, and then left to right, we have the potential accuracy, and this is the measure of quality of the results you can achieve. We have some quick top tips you should consider when doing your testing. For a more in-depth testing tips, please check out our previous webinars available on our website and socials. Modern Pool has many outlets and inlets, so samples should be taken at various points and at a depth of 100 to 300 millimeters. Whether you're using a visual or digital testing method, make sure that these are maintained. Different tests and technologies may require different methodology. It is always advised that you read the instructions first. Before taking a reading, make sure that your reagent is fully dissolved. Reagents and test strips have a best before date. Ensure you're using your reagents, which are in date. Wanting more information on our pool or spa chemistry guide, then why not visit palentest.com and download our pool chemistry guide and our new spa chemistry guide. Thank you for taking the time to attend this webinar. Please visit our website, www.palentest.com, for future webinars and previous recordings of webinars.